International Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Lee Tracy and Shirley Ross in Love is Where You Find It. Directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you on behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware. International Sterling, world famous solid silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel greeting you from the stage of the Silver Theater in Hollywood and bringing you the 24th in our new series of dramatic productions. But before we raise the curtain on today's performance, we'd like to announce that next week, Silver Theater will star Henry Fonda and Gail Patrick, among the many brilliant stars whose names already grace our guest book for future dates, are Rosalind Russell, Joan Crawford, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Helen Hayes, and others. The house lights dim and the silver curtain rises on Act One of Love is Where You Find It by True Boardman and Grover Jones. Our stars, Lee Tracy and Shirley Ross as Eddie and Sally McCoy with Joseph Kearns as Joe Stone. The time, October 1927. The scene, the Lyceum Theater leading vaudeville show house of a large Midwestern city where Eddie and Sally, the real McCoys, are billed as the headline act. As our story begins, Eddie McCoy is on the stage, nearing the end of an eccentric dance that's a kind of magic caught in rhythm, while backstage in the wings, Sally McCoy talks to Joe Stone, personal manager of the McCoys. Hey, what's Eddie done to that routine? Why, it's better than ever. Like the new flying wing he worked out. I think it looks easy. Try it sometime. <laughs> Not for Joseph. Look at that guy, will you, Sally? He's a real McCoy, and that's no lie. Not when you're talking about Eddie. When you're talking about Sally, it's something different, isn't it, Joe? Huh? Oh, you're crazy, Sally. I, I think you're okay. Oh, <laughs> you don't need to lie to me, Joe. I know how you've always felt about me. You like me, sure. But you still wish Eddie hadn't married me. I'm afraid I'm going to hold him back, aren't you? Oh, I never said that. Well, not to me, Joe. Maybe not even to Eddie. But I know. And just remember this. If I thought you were right, I'd make Eddie drop me out of the act. But you're wrong, Joe. I I just know I've got something. Uh, sure, sure you have. I wait, don't... wait. Eddie's got a new finish on his dance. Watch it. Swell. Joe, don't mention to Eddie what I said. Oh, boy, what, what a house. Whew. What a house. I love him. <laughs> Hello, Eddie. <laughs> oh, buy a 10%. Wait a minute, I gotta take a bow. Okay, Sally kid. Give me a song. Pop it up this time. Now. Eddie, I told the conductor to play it slower. I, I told I... him to play it faster. Tempo, that's what your singing needs. But if you'd only let me try my own style. I'm running this act. You use the style I tell you. Now go on. There's your introduction. Good luck, kid. Oh. She's a great gal, Joe, but she's a little bullheaded. Keeps telling me I don't know how she should sing. I'm gonna have to start beating her every Thursday or something. Do I sing? So what are you doing here? I thought you were in Chicago. I've got to talk to you, Eddie. Business. After the show. After the show, nothing. Spill it now. It's an offer, Eddie. Marshal of the Keith time is out front this afternoon. He likes you, too. He'll book you for 20 weeks back east with the crack of the palace to finish it off. Oh, why don't that conductor keep the tempo going? Her song's dragging. What? What? The palace, huh? Well, that's swell. When do we open? Not we, Eddie. Just you. What? Now, don't get sore. But he wants the act without Sally. He likes your dances and your comedy routines, but... Look, what's the idea of you wasting my time? You know I don't play any dates without my wife. Now, you've got to be sensible, Eddie. You're a name in vaudeville, but vaudeville's slipping. He's talking pictures Listen, are... vaudeville will still be cleaning up when the talkies are in a museum. And get this straight. Sally and I are doing all right, see? We've got a couple of thousand in the bank, plenty of dates to keep us busy. Till we get ready to retire on that little farm of ours, we work together. Wow. You didn't go buy a farm. No, we're going to. The kids always wanted a farm. I'm going to give it to her. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Eddie McCoy play a nursemaid to a cow. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's the answer. So Sally wants a farm. We'll let her have it. Buy one. Up in Connecticut or somewhere. And then Sally can live there while you keep on working. And I see my wife once a month, huh? Listen, Joe, this is a two-act, see? It's not a single. It's Eddie and Sally McCoy, and it's going to stay that way. Whatever we do, we do together. You're crazy. Crazy, am I? <laughs> Listen, you shriveled brain nickel pitcher. 
That kid out there happens to be the works as far as I'm concerned, see? Introduction, verse, and all the chorus. Oh, I know that, Eddie, but... But nothing. Here's the finish now. Now, listen. Keep your trap shut about this in front of her, see? but it's your funeral. Yeah? Well, watch her in this new routine we do together. That kid ain't a great dancer. I don't know show business. Not a girl, Sally. That was real singing. It's too fast, Eddie. Honest, if I sang it a little bit Good. slow. That's our introduction. Come on, let's go. <sighs> Let's show him a real dance now, kid. Not a girl, it's beautiful. Eddie, what did you want? Never mind, never mind. And those high kicks coming up now, really aim for the moon. I'll try, Eddie. Eddie, what did you want? Nothing. Nothing at all. Remember that new step. I hope so. How is that, Professor? Swell. Now, here's your single spot. Now, watch those kicks and make them good. All yeah, right. Oh, Eddie. Polly, get up, kid. Come on, go right ahead. They, they think it's a part of the dance. It's a gag. Get up. Okay. I can't, Eddie. Sally. My back, Eddie. Sally. <laughs> oh, shut up, you fools. Can't you see she's hurt? Curtain. Give me that curtain. Bring down the curtain. But look, nurse, I have a heart. The doc said I could see her this morning. All right, Mr. McCoy, you may go in, but just for a minute. She's to be taken up for the x-rays right away. Oh, yeah. Okay, nurse. Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Hello, pumpkin. Down. You look awful. Eddie, you haven't been up all night. What? Oh, I don't matter. Oh, Eddie, I'm so Sorry. Sorry. Was it your fault they had a loose board on the stage? Come on, now. Tell me. How are you feeling? I don't know. That is, I... I don't feel anything. My legs, Eddie. Just numb, sort of. Oh, I don't mean a thing. You're going to be swell. And, and in just a day or two, I've got plans for us, see? I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. McCoy, but I really think you should go. Okay. Uh, i got to go, kid. And, uh, so long for, for right now. You think you could use a kiss for good luck? <laughs> I think so. Oh, Eddie, darling. Oh, Nick's now. Nick's on the tears. You just need those x-rays to prove it, that's all. We'll be dancing together within a week. Sorry, Mr. Wilco. And so you see, these x-ray plates tell their own story, Mr. Wilco. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they do. Okay, Doc. Yes. Now, what does it all mean? Not very good news, I'm afraid. Your wife must have absolute rest. Flat on her back for at least two months. Then she should be able to manage a wheelchair. Within six months, she should be walking. And dancing, Doc? Uh, dancing? I think Mrs. McCoy had better forget about dancing. You mean, well, for a long time, huh? That isn't what I said, son. Oh. In other words, just forget about it. Huh? I'm afraid so. I get it. Thanks. Oh, Doc. Yes? Don't let Sally know that you told me, will you? All right, son. Just as you say. You may go in, Mr. McCoy, but you better not stay too long. Thanks, nurse. Eddie. Hello, kid. Come in, darling. Joe's here. Yeah? Oh. What's up, 10%? Eddie. Joe has news. Swell news. Tell him, Joe. Yeah, tell me. Why, uh, I got booking for the act that 20 weeks on the key circuit back east. And a week at the palace to finish it. Eddie. For who? Why, for us, you and me. Who else would it be? Both of us, huh? Oh, I know what you're worried about, Eddie. But I'll be all right in time. We don't have to start for two whole months. Oh. Two whole months, huh? This is the contract. Huh? You don't mind if I read it to you, Joe. You oh. know? I know a guy that signed something like this once and woke up to found he joined the Foreign Legion. In fact... All right, 10%. Where is it? Where's what? The joker, the clause in this contract that tells what happens if Sally can't work the act with me in two months. Eddie. Answer me. What does it say about that? I'll tell you. Without reading it, I'll tell you. It says that I have to go on anyway as a single, doesn't it? Well, maybe it does, Eddie. Get out of here. Eddie, it wasn't Joe's fault. It was my idea. Your fault? Yes, I... Joe beat it with you. Oh, listen, Eddie. Go on, Joe. You mustn't be sore at him, darling. 
I had Joe draw up this, this contract. I I didn't know you'd talk to the doctor. You did talk to him, didn't you? Sure, yeah, I talked to him. Then why should we pretend, darling? There's no telling when I can dance again, and you can't just lay the act off indefinitely. Why can't we? Well, this Keith booking is a big thing. Maybe so, but it's not for us. We've got another date to play, one we can still play together. Here, take a look at these. Pictures. Pictures of... Pictures of the best farm in Kendicott County. 114 acres of fertile land, a good barn, a modernized house, two cows, a horse, 246 chickens, all for the modest sum of 2,000 smackers down, and the rest when the sheriff catches it. Oh, Eddie, it's wonderful. But what's it got to do with us? Here, look. Here's a view from the front porch, see? You'll be able to sit out here and watch me while I'm doing the plowing. Did you know that we're going to grow eight-foot corn on the McCoy farm? Because we are. I got an idea. Eddie, will you quit it? Quit it? Look, I know what you mean, Doc. And you do it, too, but well, we're not going to buy a farm. Not for years yet. I'll go back and... We have bought one. That is, unless I gave that real estate guy our 2000 bucks for nothing. 2000 But that's nearly all we'd say. So what? We own something worth owning, don't we? Oh, but, Eddie, it's all crazy. You don't belong on a farm. What do you mean? Now, listen, pumpkin face. This is really a break for us, see? We might have gone on forever, beating it from town to town, living in a trunk, playing two for a nickel theaters or three for a nickel audiences. Well, I'm sick of all that. Are you, Eddie? Are you honest? Sure I am. But you never said you wanted a farm. I was the one who well, always... What if I didn't say so? I got thoughts of my own, haven't I? Oh, darling. Hey, Eddie. We don't know anything about farming, either of us. So what? What is it to learn? You plant stuff and it grows. You feed cows and they give milk. You hatch chickens and they lay eggs or something. Simple as a waltz clog routine. Learn it. What is there to learn? I tell you, it's a cinch. We're in the dough right now. Take it from me, Mrs. McCoy. We are in the dough. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're all anxious to learn just what's going to happen in Act Two of tonight's exciting story. But before we bring you the answer to that question, may I call your attention briefly to something that happened way back in the days when President Polk was guiding the destinies of the nation. It was in that year, almost a century ago, that the firm of 1847 Rogers Brothers was born. A firm that in later years was to become the most distinguished silver plate house in the country. From the very beginning, 1847 Rogers Brothers' designs expressed the loving labor and painstaking skill of silversmiths devoted to their craft. And as the years rolled on, the fame of their workmanship spread. Until today, the year mark 1847 is admittedly the most precious in silver plate. If you've never owned 1847 Rogers Brothers' silver plate, may I suggest that you visit your silverware dealer tomorrow and let him show you the pierced pattern love lace. Here is a pattern that is utterly feminine, utterly lovely. Its graceful proportions, its sterling-like detail and reed orange blossom motif will delight your heart at once. And it's your special fortune, this... And it's your special fortune, this lifetime silver plate at special savings. For just listen. Ladies and gentlemen, a complete sumptuous service for eight. Sixty-two beautiful pieces of silver plate in the love lace pattern can now be yours at a saving of more than $14 over open stock price. Let your silverware dealers, let your silverware dealers show you and tell you about the easy, convenient payment terms. For now, as never before, you can make a dream come true. You can own the best in silver plate. 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate. Once again, the lights dim and the silver curtain rises on the concluding act of Love is Where You Find It, starring Lee Tracy and Shirley Ross as Eddie and Sally McCoy. Three months have passed. Eddie has refused finally and completely to accept the offer to play his act alone in the East. And now with Sally well on the road to recovery, there comes the day when they arrive at the farm, which is to be their new home. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, it's perfect. Just like the pictures of it. I thought places were never really as swell as they look in pictures. Best gal-darn farm in a section, by cracking. 
And modern. Say, look, it's even got a pump in the kitchen. Yeah. And look, here's the window where you look out and watch me plowing. That is, until you're up and around, and you'll be doing the plowing while I watch. <laughs> it's a deal. But, Eddie, there's an awful lot of ground. Do you think you can run it? Can I run it? Listen, I've hired a guy for a week or so to show me the ropes. Then I'm on my own. Inside of two months, this place will be the talk of the state. I'm up at five tomorrow to start work. Did you say five? You? Well, you haven't been up before 10 o'clock in 10 years. Five o'clock, Eddie. Well, then I'll settle for a quarter past six. <laughs> now, where's that housekeeper? Mrs. Harkness! You gotta get to bed, you know that? That trip all the way down here was a little... Well, Samuel, my boy, if you haven't made a farmer out of me by now, I am just a dope. Here's your pay. Uh, look, Mr. Eddie... I ain't saying this just because I want the job, but uh, can't you keep me on? You know, you got more spunk than any city fellow I ever seen, but the best farmer I know would have his hands full trying to run this place alone. Why, well, I'd even take less pay. If Samuel, you you're a great guy and a pal, but I can't do it. I got to get the farm on a paying basis, and for now, that means a one man show. So it's so long, Samuel boy. Eddie. Huh? Tired, aren't you, honey? Oh, me? I'm a little plowing. I watched you. You'll kill yourself if you keep on working so hard, darling. Oh, it's simple. A horse does all the work. I just go along for the ride. Anyway, I gotta get that corn in by the end of the week. <laughs> Our eight-foot corn. And that's what it's gonna be. Eddie, I walked a little today. Oh, it's swell. You what? I walked. Mrs. Harkness helped me at first and... Then I got nearly across the room by myself. I was going to just get up and surprise you, but I... Oh, I would have felt like the leading lady in a dramatic act. Sally! Just like nothing, she comes out with it. No fanfare, no vamp, no introduction, just... I walked today, Eddie. Why, kid, that's the news of the century. With you up and around, the McCoy farm is really going to go places. Oh, Miss McCoy. Yes, Mrs. Harkness. Afraid you better tell your husband the pump's busted again. Oh, darn that thing anyway. All right, I'll tell him. Eddie. Oh, hi, you pocket face. Eddie, the pump's book. Oh, what are you reading? Uh, there's a uh, care and treatment of the young pig. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> well, a guy's got to learn, doesn't he? And <laughs> incidentally, did I tell you my new idea? I'm going to get a phonograph and a rooster of a, you know, record with a rooster uh, playing, and then I'll put it out in the middle of the night, just as I turn on the lights in the hen house, and the hens will think it's morning, they'll start laying eggs. I'll right, figure out a way to give out, make our cows get contented milk. Eddie, what's now, wrong? You... Wrong? Tell me. Whenever you stop mad lib gag routine, I know something's worrying you. What do you mean? Everything's swell. Well, maybe, the, maybe those potatoes aren't doing so good. You're but... about fed up, aren't you, Eddie? Fed up? With this, the farm, all of it. You know... Sometimes I think you'd give your right arm for grease paint and footlights again. <sighs> Don't talk nonsense. I'm crazy about the farm. Vaudeville, <laughs> leave that to those guys who don't know any better. Me, I'll stick to the pigs and clover. Not a boy, maestro. Keep up that old tempo. Oh, Sally. Hi, I... I, 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 di I didn't hear you come in. Go ahead and dance, Eddie. No, oh, I just happened to hear that music on the radio, and it felt like practicing, you know, just to see if I still could. You still can. Well, who wants to? Say, have, have you been outside? How's the, uh, how's the weather? It's starting to rain. Rain? Yes, Eddie, it looks like a storm. But, but it can't rain. Not now, Sally. It'll ruin that corn. It, it can't rain, do you hear? It can't rain. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. And you worked so hard. Oh, uh, well. What's the little corn? We got other things coming up, haven't we? It wasn't going to be as high as I wanted anyway. Next year, I'll start it earlier. Next year, Eddie? Sure. What do you mean? You're not fooling me. There was a telegram came for you while you were outside. A telegram, yeah? What? Where is it? The operator read it to me over the phone. She did, huh? It was from Joe Stone, Eddie. 
He wants to know why you haven't answered his letters about that Broadway show. Well, this sounds like a lot of Greek to me. Oh, so it's Greek to you, Eddie. You don't know that that Ken Marshall wanted to book you in the Keith Circuit that time is going to do a musical show on Broadway, huh? No, what if he is? And he wants a guy called Eddie McCoy as his featured comedian. What? Right, then he's out of luck. Eddie McCoy just happens to be out of the business. Is he? Maybe that's why Eddie McCoy listens to the radio every time he thinks I'm not around. Maybe that's why he subscribed to Variety and had it sent general delivery to the post office so I wouldn't know. Oh, darling, who do you think you're kidding? All right, so... So I read Variety. Well, what about it? Well, there's no harm in checking up on what's happening to your old pals, is there? You, you remember the O'Donnells? What I read last week... Eddie, that the... you're going to take that Marshall off. Am I? Oh, what about you? Oh, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll stay here. You can hire a couple to come and run the farm, and I'll stay with them. That's swell. And when do I see you? Look, kid, the McCoys work together, see? And if it's in show business, that's swell. If it's farming, that's swell, too. But it can't be, Eddie. You can't just stay on here. You've tried. I know you have. But any man has to work where his heart is. And your heart's in show business. It always has been. Now, that's where you're wrong, Pumpkin Face. If anybody knows where his heart is, I do, see? But, darling, you can't just... Eddie, listen to me. Yeah? If we could work together again, the old two act, Eddie and Sally, the real McCoys, would you do it? Oh, what's the sense of a question like that, baby? You know the doctor said that you couldn't dance again. Yeah, but maybe I can... Eddie, I want you to promise me something. Promise you what? That if I can make them want me too, not just because I'm your wife, but for myself, we'll go back, both of us. That don't make sense. I thought you loved the farm. Well, maybe I do. But maybe there's something else I love even more. Promise me, Eddie. Please, you've got to. Please. Oh, uh-huh. Treatments. Well, well, what, 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 what kind of treatments? Well, I don't know. He's a special kind of doctor for cases just like mine. I know we're low on money, dear. Oh, who's thinking about the dough? What I'm worried about is how you're going to get into town. Well, I fixed that too, Eddie. Mrs. Munger just down the road drives into market every Thursday afternoon, and I can go with her. Yeah, that's swell. But look, pumpkin face. Yeah? I, I don't want you counting too much on this. You get me? The other night, I was just in a stew on account of that rain wrecking the corn. It's okay with me if we never leave the farm. Is it, darling? Sure. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. What? That subscription to Variety. I canceled it yesterday. Oh, Mr. McCoy. Yeah? What is it, Miss Harkness? Can you come into the house? Quick, it's important. Sure. Sure. <clears throat> well, what's all the shooting for? Mrs. McCoy called from town just now on the telephone. The phone? Why don't you let me talk to her? Well, she couldn't wait, but she says for you to listen on the radio right away. On the radio? Yeah. Well, turn it on. Then. She uh, said that doctor of hers is going to make a speech or something like that. Her doctor is going to make a speech. So what? You know, Mrs. Hartnett, just between you and me, I... I wish she wouldn't count so Program, much on these treatments she's been taking. Of nationwide I don't think... ...originated I... here in the very center of the nation's farm belt. What is... And now what as our that? program continues, it's my pleasure to present again an artist whose performances in recent weeks on this program have been a genuine highlight of the show. That popular melody, I Cried For You, sung in her own truly distinctive style by Sally McCoy. I hey! doctor's treatment. S singing on the radio. What, what is this? Listen, Mr. McCoy. Oh, the little dope. She's dragging it again. I always told her to pick up the tempo. Come on, Sally, baby. Pick it up now. Faster. Why should she sing faster? I like it this way. Anybody can sing fast. Now, look, Mrs. Harkness, you may know housekeeping. When it comes to... Wait a minute. What a maybe, fool maybe you're right. I used to be. But then, to 
listen to that, will you? Oh, she's got style. She's got something I'd love you too for a nickel song plugger hasn't got. Sing it, Sally. Sing it, Parkin Face. Show them what a dope I am. I cried for you. Now it's your turn to cry over me. Do you hear that? And that's the kid that I tried to tell how to sing. Oh, Mr. McCoy, where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? To town to get the real McCoy. But, Mr. McCoy, look. See, the program's over. Yes, the program You're not... is over, sir. Well, listen, I'm Eddie McCoy. You understand? My wife's right inside there. She just... Eddie! Uh, Mrs. McCoy... I beat it, you. But... No, oh, all right. Doctor's treatment, son. You're not sore? Sore? I'm so sore I could choke somebody. Who, me? No. A guy named Eddie McCoy. A wise guy who knows all there is to know about how people should sing. Oh, Eddie, I hated to lie to you. But I knew it would take time. I had to practice and then get an audition and then sing on one or two shows till I was sure myself. Was it okay, Eddie? Was it okay? Then we've got an act again. I'll say we've got an act. Sally and Eddie, the real McCoy. You mean Eddie and Sally? No. I mean Sally and Eddie. Top billing for the top performer. Me, I'm just a hooper with a bunch of gags. You, you've got a voice in seven million. Oh, darling, that means that we're set, both of us. Well, what are you talking about? Well, you know that fellow marshal that Joe wired you about? He heard me on the air last week, and, and he wants both of us to work together in his Broadway show. I told him we'd wire him tonight. Don't wake me up. I'm, I'm dreaming. Then we do it, Eddie. We sell the farm and both go back where we belong. Sell the farm? Now, listen, pumpkin face. We'll still own that farm when you're 99 and I'm 104. <laughs> From now on out, we spend all the rest of the year working at what we know. But Summers, we're going to come back here and, uh, you know what, Mrs. McCoy? What, Mr. McCoy? Some of these days, I'm going to do it if it kills me. I'm going to grow eight-foot corn. This is Conrad Nagel again, ladies and gentlemen, thanking you in the name of our stars for that very enthusiastic round of applause. I'd like to tell you about something else, which I'm sure you'll also applaud enthusiastically. I mean International Sterling's exciting new pattern, Prelude. For Prelude proclaims the skill and artistry of International Sterling's gifted craftsmen, as no other solid silver pattern I've ever seen. It's a design fashioned unmistakably in the new romantic mood of today, with soft rhythmic lines and flower ornament patiently, exquisitely carved. A pattern whose rich elegance will find instant harmony with the finest of lace and the most precious glassware in China. And in order that you may see the clean-cut perfection of finish and workmanship, the really striking loveliness of their newest pattern, International Sterling Tonight extends this friendly invitation to all of you. All right, John. Tomorrow, Monday, go wherever the best silverware is sold in your town and ask to see sets of Prelude Sterling. There are complete services for eight... 12 or 24 people, which you can buy right out of income, as well as single place settings of six pieces that cost as little as $16.75. Your dealer will be glad to show you the different sizes and explain the amazingly convenient payment terms. So don't let this opportunity slip by. Remember the date tomorrow. Remember the pattern, International Sterling's new prelude. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Tracy will soon be seen in the RKO production, Fixer Dugan. Shirley Ross has just completed her new Paramount picture, Some Like It Hot. Next week, our stars will be Henry Fonda and Gail Patrick in Timber, another original story written especially for Silver Theater by Grover Jones and True Boardman. Be sure to listen. In the meantime, if you want solid silver, you want international sterling. If you want silver plate, you want 1847 Rogers Brothers both proudly created by International Silver Company. The music heard on this program was arranged and conducted by Felix Mills. John Conti speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.